Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this section I'd like to talk to you briefly about the structure of the course. I've arranged the course in a particular sequence and the sequence comprises a number of chapters and each chapter comprises one or more sections and a section basically contains one video. The sections are generally around 15 minutes or so in length, some are more, some are slightly less and ideally you cover the course in the sequence in which I present it. Having said that, a number of the sections are pretty much independent of everything else. So if, for example, the first thing you want to do is find out about customising the ribbon, which is actually towards the end of the course, you could go straight to that now and it's independent of everything else. However, beware, do not try and leap too far ahead unless you have a good reason to, because quite often the material that I cover will be dependent on the early material in the course. Now there are a couple of things to be aware of and one of them is that project files are included with the material on this course and you should have a copy of the project files downloaded. The list of files will look something like this. It won't necessarily be exactly the same but you need to know where these files are. I also suggest you keep a backup copy of them in case you work on them and maybe break something or accidentally delete something. These are most of the files that I'll be using during the course and you can see that I've got them saved into a course files folder and I would suggest that you download them from the course and also create your own project 2019 advanced folder to save off these course files. There's also a folder containing the exercise files on this course. During the course I'll be setting you various exercises to do and you should make sure again that you know where these files are. They contain my sample answers, generally speaking, plus one or two other things, including starting points in one or two cases. And again, you may want to open my files, perhaps check what you've done, maybe even try changing what I've done, but make sure that you've always got a backup copy so that you can refer back to that if necessary. Now another point I'd like to make here is one that I make at various points during the course, and that is I've used a specific locale language currency and indeed specific dates and when you're working through the course you may want to change any of these including the dates. So for instance you may want to shift a project sometime into the future to correspond with the time that you're following this course. So for example I'm doing this course in March April 2019 and when you come to sit this course it might be a year later, it might be two years later, so please don't feel that you have to keep the same start date for your project that I do in my videos. You can adjust it to correspond with the current date if you want to. You don't have to do that. If you want to work along with me, then that's absolutely fine as well, but please don't feel that you're stuck with the start date that's showing in the course. Also remember that what you see might not necessarily be the same because of your installation of Project 2019. You may have a different working week, you may have different public holidays set up and so on. So it wouldn't really be possible for me to say that specifically any date or range of dates on your system will be exactly the same as mine or indeed that any dates will work out exactly the same in terms of say an elapsed amount of work from a starting point. So bear in mind that particularly when you're working on an exercise, Differences between your locale, between your calendar, between your working time, holiday days may mean that there are differences in some of the answers to the exercise when compared with mine. Having said that, I've tried to make sure that both the course material that I cover and the exercises that I set um, suffer from this kind of issue as little as possible. Now another very important point, when you open certain project files that are provided with the course, you may see a Microsoft Project Security Notice. Any of the project files that have an embedded macro will almost certainly generate this notice, although to some extent whether it's generated does depend on the options you have set on your system. As far as the project files that you download from Simon Says It in relation to this course are concerned, then there's no danger on clicking on the Enable Macros option. So those are just a few points to be aware of in relation to the course structure. That's it for now, I will see you in the next section.